Nigeria's merchandise trade dropped in first quarter 2020. Federal Inland Revenue Service launches new tax clearance certificate application portal. And Nigerian traders expect 90.94 billion Naira maturities this week, just as stocks across the globe fall ahead of Federal Reserve updates. This is Business Express reaching you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Amina Nujaim. Thank you for joining us today. Just reaching us say the House of Representatives has passed the amended 2020 appropriation bill of 10.801 trillion naira. The approved amount is 300 billion naira more than the revised figure of 10.5 trillion submitted by the executive. The House also approved 5.5 billion dollars presidential loan request to fund the budget, executive priority projects, and support projects by states and government. Global health crisis from COVID-19 resulted in several countries implementing varying degrees of restriction with respect to international trade, travel and tourism. To this regard, figures from the National Bureau of Statistics show that Nigeria has recorded a total trade deficit of $361.19 million, an equivalent of $138.98 billion naira between January and March. Input components of this trade stood at $4.221 billion, naira, or 50.8% while the export component totaled 4.082 billion naira, indicating 49.2% of total trade. The trade deficit of 138.98 billion naira during the quarter made it two consecutive quarters of negative balance of trade as the value of imports surpassed exports. The MBS notes that consecutive quarters of negative trade balances occurred against the backdrop of a global slowdown in economic activity as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. Well, the impact of the coronavirus outbreak on a global scale, countries have taken the measures to sustain their economy to fortify the real sector. Now, despite these measures, the World Bank projects that global economy will shrink by 5.2% this year. That would represent the deepest recession since the Second World War, according to the bank's forecast in its June 2020 global economic outlook. An economist, Henry Etema, says economists like Nigeria cannot afford to slack in putting measures to show up the economy. The, the, the subsequent effect is that the globe will retool. There will be need for changes in relations in production and the production processes. I can see that ICT intensive application in production will be the norm. There will be need to minimize over dependence on the old ways of doing things. With the little we have seen, we know that we have been carrying unnecessary burden, using excessive value input into what we should have commonly solved using indigenous technology. Now everybody will be forced to look inwards, use his own people and harness his own resources. And from a humble beginning few years ago and now an employer of labor, 
adding value to the economy. Such is the story of a young entrepreneur in Kaduna, courtesy COVID-19 cash support by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Muhammad Umar Ajingi tells us more on surviving COVID-19. It all began when he was in school as an undergraduate. Victor Emmanuel, now 35, a graduate of mechanical engineering from Bayer University, Kanu, sold yogurt on the street to support himself in school. And, uh, even with my engineering degree, I had to leave that aside completely. I became a sales boy. I remember in Mission Road <laughs> in Benin City. And... Um, the market, the demand kept growing, even without my the certification, which prompted for me to now begin to put all that is needed. Victor's journey to success, however, began in Kaduna, when he established a yogurt and sachet water producing firm after his resignation from a private firm. The business started with 40,000 naira. 40,000 naira was to buy me half bag of milk, half bag of sugar, buy me the bottles I was going to use as samples and print the labels and all of that. It was just there. Proceed from Central Bank COVID-19 cash support boosts his production capacity with additional staff, modern equipment, stable power supply and improved logistics to convert product to consumers. COVID was unprecedented. No staff, no money. We're just looking what next, what next, who is going to come to your aid. But this intervention fund came, I can't just, I can't really give words to it, but I would just want to thank, first of all, the government for even conceiving this idea for small business owners, because we're really struggling, most of us. Some of us have to go for very ridiculous high interest uh, monies to be able to do this. Entrepreneurs like Victor believe that small and medium scale enterprises are veritable tools for economic growth with value chains for job creation, revenue generation and poverty reduction. Now, a few days ago, the National Bureau of Statistics revealed that 42% of Nigerians lost their job due to the coronavirus pandemic. The NBS said the impact of COVID-19 on employment and income has been widespread. It explained in the report that 42% of respondents who were working before the outbreak reported they are currently not working due to COVID-19. We will be talking about just how bad the situation is and the way to go. Our guest is joining us via Zoom. He is Sam Amadi, an economic analyst. Thank you for joining us today on Business Express. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now looking at uh, the dynamics um, played out by the National Bureau of Statistics about loss of jobs, how bad is the situation and um, what sectors would you say were badly hit by the pandemic? Well, expectedly, uh, we, we knew it, it's going to be mostly the service sector because of the necessity for human interaction. So the service sector had massive job loss, expected because many of them left uh, uh, The civil servants, especially in the federal government, uh, federal establishment, didn't lose jobs because some of them were to go home or they're still on employment. So the service sector was worse hit. Then the manufacturing industrial sector, in terms of uh, industries that had to be off from production, because of course, some of the inputs that come from China and overseas were not available. So even apart from the lockdown, the, the fact that factories in Europe and in China and Asia, we are on almost uh, half or almost, uh, you know, redundant and redundant meant that uh, the inputs for manufacturing were not coming in. So manufacturing sector suffered massive. Uh, in the agriculture sector, not much because agriculture, rural agriculture, was still, uh, people were still going to farms in many places. And so most of the job loss came from the service sector and manufacturing sector. Again, in terms of income, the, 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 the depreciation, many people lost income and mostly 
the unemployed, the, 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 middle, the small and middle enterprises, and the self-employed, like the artisans, the mechanics, and those who do hard level, the worker day people who, who earn every day, they don't have much income. So if you look at that number, about 74% of those who are pulled uh, indicated that they lost income. Those are the people who are not in paid employment, but who are perhaps self-employed, self-reliant, doing uh, 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 technical and other kinds of uh, income generating activities, but not employed in the former sense. So massive uh, job loss and massive income losses. All right, then, Mr. Sam, let me come in here. You're talking about massive job losses. Recently, there were news that some banks were actually not just um, cutting salaries, but they were cutting jobs. Now, whether it's the banking sector or any other sector within the Nigerian economy, could this have been avoided? Was there another way around this situation? The pandemic, by its nature, was unexpected, um, uh, you know, unscripted, basically. So uh, we got to, by early uh, December, we started hearing about uh, the, the virus in Wuhan and then became pandemic much later by the uh, declaration of the World Health Organization. But primarily, what could have done is many of the countries where the law uh, kind of protects employment, like the Scandinavian, the social democratic societies. Secondly, I, in places like UK and America, uh, government supported uh, the private sector by perhaps taking, in the case of UK, about 70 to 80 percent of wages were so taken by the government within that period. So employers would have incentive to keep everybody in employment as long as they knew that um, there were going to be stimulus addressed to keeping jobs. We had a late rally at the House of Reps where they tried to pass, the National Assembly passed uh, the, um, the, the, the stimulus, which meant that if, if, the, if the enterprises do not uh, sack workers, they will not, they will have about 50% of their pro, of their tax cut off. But that's, that's very little compared with the cost of employment. So uh, in a way, it was inescapable that some of the companies, especially in the aviation sector, where total collapse, total lockdown, and uh, okay, we expect Mr. that that sector will suffer brutally until the okay, uh, next year. So in that sector, it was not easy to, 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 to avoid uh, some level of sacking and all right, um, Mr. Madi, something comes to mind right now. Recently, the World Bank in a report two days ago says that uh, per capita incomes are expected to decline by about um, 3.6%, which will tip millions of people into extreme poverty. That is this 2020. What would you say are the options for employment and possible re-employment to reduce the um, poverty levels predicted? Those estimations might even be worse, you know, as we move on. But the critical thing we can do is the government can now, realizing on the MPC report, NPS report, we are very poor. On the world of poverty clock, we are extremely poor. So what we should do right now is to build protection, social security. And this is where government intervention in terms of improving livelihood, in terms of creating new sources of employment. For example, the National uh, Labor and Productivity Ministry, and as well as the agriculture reform they are trying to do, can employ many people. It's, we need to, government needs to put people in employment. In, the, in, the, in those days, in the past, in, the, in Europe and America, you do extensive government work. You improve, you construct roads, bridges. In fact, you have to even upgrade bridges that you don't need to. Why? To keep people working. So, Government can reabsorb a lot of people who will be laid off in order to control this attitude of poverty. Our poverty state is so diff so bad that it will affect sustainable economic growth. And therefore, it's in the interest of sustainable growth that government invests in keeping incomes you know, reasonable, in ensuring that people don't leave jobs, and those who will leave jobs have other kind of public work where government can finance them. If it's a minimum wage, but it's sanitation in the rural area, agriculture, let's get people back to work public work, bridges, roads, even if they're not experts, it's in a way to create income and give them livelihood. And over time, when the economy normalizes, government can pull back from those extensive investments and then it will increase human development, increase purchasing All power, right, um, which will help the private Mr. sector job start again. All right, uh, Mr. Amadi, and just to take you on one last um, question. Recently, um, there's been talk about the trade merchandise deficit that Nigeria recorded in the first quarter. Now, how do you see the gap being bridged 
considering the prevailing circumstances? Reasonable to expect that there will be job loss. I think more job losses. Uh, first is the CBN has rolled out some incentive, and thank thankfully they already started disbursement as of maybe a few days ago. The intervention to stop this private stuff from bleeding is critical because that will be the more uh, major job employer. But let's not forget agriculture. Agriculture is still the largest employer if you look at it from that far, and even in pharmacy. So we should keep on supporting investment in increasing productivity. We should also try to encourage people because the answer to recession is more production. We need to invest more. The Keynesian theory works still, that the government has to spend more. And to spend more, you either have to borrow more or print more money or somehow make savings from so from other previous expenditures. So we expect our government to shut down on costly governance and put the money into agriculture, put the money into public work in order to reduce job loss and improve household income, which is the one way that we can okay. increase purchasing power Thank you, that will um, also Mr. Uh, economic development. Thank you, Mr. Amadi, for your insight. We have to let you go at this point, but um, we appreciate you joining us on the program today. Now, commodity prices have continued to climb because of a combination of factors, including the supply disruptions caused by checkpoints, bottlenecks, and fear of infection. Many analysts expected domestic commodity prices to fall back to normal as the lockdown was partially relaxed. How are commodities faring on the domestic and global markets? The commodities index inched higher by 10.49% at the close of trading last week to settle at a season high of 197.56 points. The rally in the index was stimulated as a result of increased demand for maize in the commodity markets as the price of maize rose by 19.91% to close at 122,631 naira. The rally in maize was also reflected in the open market as price rallied by 8.45% to continue its season-to-date bull run. We have in the studio Mr. Isaac Sunday. He is the Director of Crops Development and Value Addition of FICAN to discuss the prices of commodities in the market. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has affected a wide area of sectors, the oil sector being one. But it also seems the commodity market is also worst hit. Um, what do you make of commodities and the coronavirus pandemic scenario? Thank you, Amina. The COVID-19 pandemic has actually affected the uh, export of agricultural commodities in Nigeria so much that uh, we cannot export as usual and the buyers also are not buying as usual which is a global pandemic and majority of the commodities that we are exporting from nigeria like cocoa sesame seed cashew hibiscus ginger name them these are the commodities that we have generated revenue for, go for government over the years. Okay. And most of them could no longer be exported as usual. Some of them are damaged at the storage, storage, totally bad. Some of them are losing weight at storage. 
So prices cannot be guaranteed. So how are prices really now? If they cannot be guaranteed, are they high, are they low? How, how do you stabilize them? How do you address the situation? How we address the situation now is that there has to be a deliberate effort of government to intervene okay. in the area of giving exporters interest-free loans so that they can restart the business. Because most of the indigenous exporters are running away from export because some of them borrowed money from, from banks okay. and from other sources and they cannot pay just because it, it was an unexpected situation that happened to everybody. Now, still talking about an unexpected situation, inflation, falling prices of oil. How has, um, f for instance, bread has gone up 60%. Now, um, looking at this, how has this affected um, the market generally? Yes, most of the wheat they are using in making bread were imported. And it's only the few that have them on ground that are actually producing bread. So you can see that the price must definitely go up if we must eat bread. And we have not developed our local capacity enough that we can make use of some of our commodities that we are producing, like wheat and cassava, whatever, whatever. Okay. So we cannot do much on our own. It's only a few that have imported before this time that, that actually you know, producing bread. Okay, earlier on you made mention of the efforts of government in the commodity market. Now, with its effort to increase, to first of all, diversif diversify the Nigerian economy and possibly increase agriculture, how do you, what sectors should be, what, what, what sectors should government look at as far as the commodity market is concerned? The sector the government will look at is to increase production. For instance, the government is talking of anchor borrowers program. Okay. If the, there is a deliberate effort and money is released to f farmers that are producing these agricultural commodities on time, there will be enough production that will be able to take care of our food security and also export. Okay. And there must, there must be value addition. We must not continue to export raw materials from here. Now, that, that value addition seems to be an issue. It seems to be like a recurring challenge for the commodity market. How can this be tackled? Of course, this can be tackled by if, for instance, we okay. have a dedicated power okay. infrastructure for our local entrepreneurs, SMEs, value can be added to our commodities without you sending raw material or exporting jobs to other people out there. Okay. And I'm sure the present administration is trying to tackle that aspect of value addition. Okay. All right. Mr. Isaac Sunday, the Director, Crop Development and Value Chain of FACAN, thank you so much thank for you. joining us on thank the you. program today. Thank you for having me. Now for how stocks are performing across the group, let's join Abose de Abel. On the 10th day of June, early trading in Asia saw stocks mixed as Chinese inflation data for May missed expectations. Nikkei closed 0.15% higher at 23,124.95, while Hansing Index was fractionally lower as of its final hour of trading, and Shanghai Composite down 0.42% to 2,943.75. U.S. stock futures were affected as investment investors awaited an update from the Federal Reserve on the state of the economy and status of any further stimulus from the central bank. Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures lost 300 points. The move implied an opening loss of about 92 points. The S&P 500 Futures lost 0.78%, while Nasdaq Futures gained 0.29%. European stocks reversed early gains as investors await the outcome of the U.S. Federal Reserve's latest policy meeting. Africa's equities were also affected, with Ghana's GSE Composite posting gains. Africa's equities were also affected, with Ghana's GSE Composite posting gain of 0.47%, 
while South Africa's JSA Africa Top 40, Nairobi's All Share, Namibia's Overall Index, and Tunisia's Tunidex were negative. Meanwhile, back home, the old share index closed today's trading session by 25,215.04 basis points, depreciating by 0.47%. The volume of trade was 266 million, valued at 3.1 billion naira traded in 3,978 deals. Market capitalization stood at 13.1 trillion naira. The most sought after stocks were Guarantee Trust Bank, Mutual Benefit Assurance PLC, and FBN Holdings. The gainers chart was topped by Okomu Oil, Berger, and UPDC Real Estate Investment Trust, while the losers was led by Bow Cement, USCN, and Guinness. And that's a wrap on this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed, all previous episodes are available on YouTube. And you can also communicate with us on Twitter. Don't forget the hashtag BizExp. Thank you for joining us today. Join us again on Friday for another edition. And don't forget, as the world battles COVID-19, wash your hands or use a sanitizer. Thank you for watching.